Hello, I'm Smokey957 and welcome to my second episode of the Mojave Territories. And in this episode, I'm going to show you the critical choices you must make to become the provisional state of Mojave, give you a short naval tutorial, and also show you how to defend any nation against attacks from both land and sea. Now, between winning the first Battle of Hoover Dam and the Chaos in California event, you only have one year, two months, and one week, which means you have just 15 focuses to prepare yourself because the Legion is still coming. And if you thought facing the Legion with your NCR big brother was hard, facing them possibly alone is going to be impossible if you don't if you get properly prepared. So I've made two major changes before starting this episode. First is that after these arms workshops are completed, I'm going to be constructing bunkers and outposts around every land border into my territory. And then secondly, I rearranged my two battalions. First battalion is now my main attacking force with what little power armor I have. And second battalion's main task is going to be defending the banks of the Colorado. You may also have noticed that I've changed my unit leaders around. This is to take advantage of their skills and traits, and I recommend you do this no matter what nation you're playing, as every advantage you can create for yourself is another step towards winning. So that's said and done. Let's get started. Ah, the second campaign. Conquest, Bitters, Aftermath. The forces of the Mojave Expedition, led by General Oliver and spearheaded by Chief Hanlon's Rangers, has held most strategic points across the Mojave for months now. After the defeat of the Mojave Chapter and signing of the Treaty of New Vegas, the expedition faces no organized military opposition. However, as the NCO's war-weary troopers are just discovering, beating the Brotherhood and occupying a handful of settlements was the easy part of the campaign. Despite some bold initiatives, Oliver's Mojave expedition has been more or less unable to actually pacify the Mojave. Organized military opposition may be eliminated, but supplies are far too sparse to heavily garrison settlements, and radio groups move freely and rapidly across the Mojave every day. To cap off the bleak picture is the ever-growing threat posed by Caesar and his legion on the far side of the Colorado, drawing even more on the expedition's stretched resources. <coughs> With the list of objectives vast, the Mojave Defense Committee has been assembled to deliberate over the question of the second campaign. On the one side, General Oliver advocated for the continuation of current policy, offering limited garrisons to settlements when necessary, but prioritizing local autonomy to save manpower. Chief Hanlon, meanwhile, seeks a more radical policy of withdrawing the bulk of the expedition forces to a series of hard points, Hoover Dam, Camp McCarran, and a variety of smaller camps, while leaving settlements to their own devices. There is little appetite for Helen's strategy back home, but considering the expedition's mandate is pacification, not emancipation, there is a good case to be made for his tactics. The debate will rage late into the night. No, it won't, because I will continue to support Oliver. And now, the count of 15 focuses until... We have to, the split is now upon us, but first I need to complete this part of the focus tree before I can move on to the second part. So I'm going to start off with calling up the second draft. Whatever advantage Mr. House thinks he may possess in Securitrons, the NCR more than makes up for in good quality fighting men and women. We should call for a second draft of citizens from the NCR, and with any luck, some of them will be deployed to help us. So we'll get three trained divisions of Mojave troopers, and also another extra 300 manpower. All right, so I've called up the second draft, and here they are right here. I'm actually going to change them to my Mojave infantry template for a little bit of extra breakthrough. Don't worry about the demolitions equipment. We'll be getting enough of that soon. And I'm going to add them onto 1st Battalion so they have a little bit of extra oomph. And now it is time for me to continue across here and do the Nipton deal. Nipton was largely untouched by the bombs of the Great War. As a result, a lively community still thrives in and around it. One far too large for us to control through martial law alone. If we were to make a deal with Nipton's mayor, 
granting some autonomy in exchange for loyalty, we would gain compliance in the region. So it doesn't really concern me because it's co it's uh, currently cored, but I will get extra civilian workshop at the cost of five stability, which don't really have much of a choice. I have to take the deal. Oh, the Mojave campaign event. Defeating the Legion at the dam was but the first step. Despite the defeat, we're faced with an unending guerrilla war which raids across the mighty Colorado. But at least this cost the Legion as much as us. So we do get some uh, exp army experience gain, but we lose three manpower each week and 3% uh, of our caps. This starts a series of events which unfortunately will actually uncore Nipton and also Cottonwood Cove here. If you've played Fallout New Vegas, you should know some of the history of what's about to happen. Okay, the Nipton deal's been signed and our stability has really taken that 5% hit. But the next focus before we move into the next branch is March on Britta Bitter Springs. For years, the tribal raiders who call themselves the Great Khans have plagued our territory. Based to the east of Vegas, in their camp known as Bitter Springs, they think themselves safe from repercussion. It's time to put that end to an end of their foolery. So it'll take a couple of days to march. Now, this is still part, Bitter Springs is here. This is still part of the old map that was updated and moved the Great Khans from here all the way up to become the Northern Khans over here. So apart from the actual focus that we have to do, nothing else actually happens as uh, this still needs to be updated at some point, I think, in the future. All right, the March on Bitter Springs is finished and now I just want to take a moment to describe the options that you have if you are facing the crisis in California event and you know that it's coming. Now, for a normal Mojave Territories run, you'd now do supply and demand, appoint Ambassador Crocker, and then you start the great debate to decide who's going to lead the Mojave Territories, either Oliver or Helen. Now, in a way, this still has an effect if you are going to go either with Oliver or Helen after the crisis, as they still have a tree that you can follow. I am going down this tree here, a new dawn, as this is the only way you can form the state of Mojave. So I am not going to be doing the center bit of the branch here. Instead, I am going to go with appointing, appointing Abbot Ambassador Crocker. Following Ambassador Ethers retirement earlier this year from a role as Ambassador Extraordinary and whatever that word is, of the NCR MC New Vegas, we need to find a suitable replacement. Under political pressure from Shady Sands, it seems we only have one possible candidate, Dennis Crocker. A career politician, Crocker led Kimball's successful campaign to sit on the NCR Council. He at least seems a competent diplomat. All right, so we'll get some extra civilian intel and army intel over New Vegas. Ah, here's another one of those events I knew was coming. The disaster of Camp Searchlight. General Lee Oliver, it appears the Legion has sneaked into Camp Searchlight and unsealed nuclear waste casts. Our men and women have been gulified, and in the chaos, Radius has landed at Cottonwood Cove and begun raiding surviving troops. Welcome to Camp Searchlight, the shittiest place on Earth. So we lose 200 manpower, 5 war support, and a whole bunch of damage to Cottonwood Cove which I'm going to have to now rebuild. So the ambassador has been appointed. Now uh, you have a choice here, either an offer, which means that if there is a uh, re revolt in New Vegas, you will offer your support for Benny. But I always like to go for we can refuse because frankly, I want the money. Benny doesn't strike us as a reliable partner. Perhaps I'll reach out to others instead and keep it business. Keep it business. And I can continue now just snaking my way through my scientific research. Oh yes, business is good. So we've just got ourselves 200,000 NCR dollars 
my next focus is going to be deploy the military force. I want these infantry tech research bonuses. The NCR's reputation is perpetually tarnished by rowdy, drunk and generally disobedient NCR troopers spending all their wages on the New Vegas Strip. While we can do little to restrict NCR troopers from spending their money on hookers and drugs, we can at least police those who get too unruly. Besides, our military police are the only units on the Strip allowed to carry firearms. So if Mr. House gets a little too uppity, oh, I like the way they added that on at the end there. So what am I going to spend my money on? I am going to repair the western boat lift at Hoover Dam. Because this will now allow the navy I'm beginning to build to go on both ends of the Colorado. So I can use both ends. Now just to be clear, this doesn't let your enemy use both sides, only the person who actually controls Hoover Dam can move their ships north or south of Hoover Dam. So I deployed the military police to New Vegas to make sure my soldiers don't carry on their nonsense. Focus choose reset once again and now I'm going to swap across now that I've got the uh, infantry technology boost. I want to swap across to get supply and demand. The Vahavia is vast and desolate. It prop to properly control it, we require a number of military bases crisscrossing the region, each requiring constant supply and reinforcement. Whilst we may have about enough supplies to keep our current outposts ticking over, if we are to expand our outposts, construct new ones, or suffer any espionage, we may be unable to provide enough supply to our bases. So we'll get the event supply in the Mojave, and we will get the Mojave supply mechanic in our decisions tab, which I will show you when it comes around. I guess this picture is uh, familiar to quite a few of you. The Nipton Massacre. Legionary forces have massacred the people of Nipton. Led by one of the rudimentary, it appears they tricked the town's mayor into letting them massacre the NCR troopers visiting this town they then turned on the inhabitants and slaughtered them all in a sadistic lottery. This is a grave blow to a hold on the region. And blast. So now Nipton is no longer a core, so I'm going to have to recore it. And I've lost 5% stability, and the resistance in instantly goes up to 25%. Oh, blast indeed. Okay, supplying the Mojave. The Mojave was far from a spitful terrain before the Great War. After it, great swaths of the Mojave became scorching radiation-filled deserts. Movement of troops and civilians is difficult, and largely restricted to two major trade routes, Route 95 and the R-15. Even more difficult is movement of supplies. Caravans are slow and bulky and often have to navigate off established trade routes to reach outposts and garrisons in strategic rather than convenient locations. While we had enough supply to support the establishment and expansion of our current outposts, any future e efforts to expand upon resupply or establish bases will require the investment of supply. We can gain supply through concerted efforts to do in our focus tree, or through negotiating for it from the NCR government. It can only be used for various projects available later in our focus tree. Additionally, one-tenth of our supply is added to our attack and defense. So what means the higher the, the higher I can get my supply, the more attack and defense I have. But compromises may need to be made. My next focus, because I am now aiming to head down to move my capital to Camp McCarran, is to do act now or forever hold our peace. The clash at Hoover Dam has left us jarred. We don't know how long we'll be able to hold on to the Mojave, but we need to assume the answer may not be forever. We need to hurry up and extract resources from the area before it's too late. So Route 95 is caught, so I'm not worried about that compliance. Nipton isn't, but luckily it's less of a compliance drop. But the resources will come in very handy. Now you can see your I have a supply here, so there's my tensor. I get almost an extra percent attack and defense, which is very nice. And 
it's about time for a year in review so in the year 2277 added some military advisors here uh, we are 120 days from having the uh, Hoover Dam boat lift up and running as for research I have upgraded my power uh, uh, my special forces kit to pioneer and very soon i'll be using these two 100 percent research bonuses to go up to the service rifle i have also upgraded my light machine gun haven't changed anything for my conventional warfare and also waiting now for the new year to start researching my next level of aircraft for naval tech I have unlocked all the basic ones I need and medium weapon for intermediate warfare. Industry wise, still following the OSI research uh, bonus I, I, I get. And I'm following that going through and snaking my way through this re branch as well. I have very small air force trying to get up as fast as I can one naval ship currently in training and the real good news is I have basically doubled the size of my army so that's about that okay some more precious precious resources are now mine so the next one I'm going to do is I've been working on the railroad building a railroad from Sandy Sands to New Vegas has been a great dream of General Oliver's, but not only would it be a propaganda victory, but it would also allow for the extremely quick redeployment of troops to New Vegas and the Hoover Dam from the NCR's heartland. The first part of the line running from Baker alongside the R-15 is relatively easy to construct due to the strong control over the area. Running a line through the Mojave, meanwhile, may be a bit more of an issue. So again, extra three infrastructure in the Long 15. And this is what I've been waiting for. For those that haven't watched my Californian State playthrough, I'll read this out for you. Electoral deadlock in the NCR. At first, many waited with great enthusiasm and unease for the results of the ongoing election and the new California Republic to be announced. It has seen that although all certainty had vanished, save for the tactic understanding that the destiny of the Republic would be enshrined and that the will of the people would be recognized as it always had. And yet as the election drew on, a great terrible sense of trepidation began to dominate the general character of New California. The general anxiety was horrible, and over the desert loomed a specter of imminent and physical danger. Night swept by with the apprehension became a source of public nuisance for those who pretended to sleep. Each day the Senate bickered and votes shifted like desert sands in the wind. Still a majority inevitably failed to manifest, and the bickery continued. As time passed, it seemed abundantly clear that the New California Republic had, for the first time in history, faced absolute dictatorial deadlock. The bear has grown sick, vultures circle overhead. So now I only have five or six focuses until the inevitable complete breakdown of the NCR. So I need to be even more careful to make the right choices before that happens. Alright, so that's some more infrastructure added to the R15. So now there are five focuses I want to complete before everything goes pear-shaped. And that is I want to, as I said, move my capital to Camp McCarran. And I also want to reinforce Hoover Dam. So first I'm going to carry on here with the first supply. Delivered along the newly constructed line from Baker to the Mojave outpost, our first shipment of supplies from Shady Sands should keep us ticking over on nicely. So now we've increased the supply by 40, so that should mean... Oh, let's have a look. Okay, probably hasn't updated yet. Okay, let's talk Navy. Now I know it's not the important thing in Old World Blues as your Army and your Air Force, but it can still be very useful, and one thing it can be extremely useful for is to stop naval invasions. Let me explain. To do a naval invasion 
need to have 100% naval supremacy along the route the invasion is going to take place from the port to the landing site. So even if your navy is small, like mine is going to be, you can help ensure that your enemy won't get the naval supremacy he needs to launch invasions. So, what ships are best? I recommend the medium ships. Why? In my experience, is that it gives the best balance between cost and effectiveness. Take this basic longship. It's not much more than building a light ship compared to the very expensive heavy ships, but it has more possible weapon slots and can fit medium weapons, which also strike a good balance between light and heavy attack. So what I recommend you do is what I've done, and that is if you want to build any form of navy, then instead of reaching researching something ahead of time, spend a few moments researching some naval modules. They are relatively quick to research compared to other ones, so it shouldn't cost you that much time. <coughs> then build two ships or whatever class you want. Obviously I recommend mediums. And once you've built them, set them to train. You should get between 20 and 25 naval XP per ship. Once you have that XP, go to your ship designer and upgrade your ship design as you want to. So I'm going to add armor, optics, a light deck weapon here because that's the highest I can do, medium there. Sales for extra speed, and I think that's all I'm going to be able to know. Okay, so once you've upgraded the ship as best you can, you then want to build another two of those and send it straight into your squadron. Once you've done this a few times and you're comfortable with your design, then send the older ships to for refit up to your most modern design. Refitting your ships is far cheaper than producing new ones, and if you have two more dockyards, you can have one doing a refit while the others are still building new ones. So now, what do you do with your ships? Well, there's really two things you, you can do. Set them on patrol or strike force on your coastline, setting them to engage at low risk and to auto repair. Now when it comes down to numbers, only an enemy massive naval force will be able to achieve the naval supremacy they need to invade. And so that's it. Okay, so that's the supply shipment delivered. I hate it when this focus sheet keeps on resetting. Next, the Mojave Line. A long-term ambition of the NCR Senate was to contract a railway line connecting the NCR proper to New Vegas. The railway serves two purposes, both to bring trade quickly and efficiently to New Vegas and to assist in the rapid redeployment of NCR troops to the Mojave as needed. So construct a railway joining the Long 15 to New Vegas will begin construction using labor from the NCR Correctional Facility. What could go wrong? We get an extra two infrastructure in Good Springs and in Nipton. All right, that's the last part of the railroad finished. So now, Camp McCarran Primacy. With our military HQ has always been to serve the military outpost. Camp McCarran has become our major supply depot and outpost in the northern Mojave wastelands. It's time to officially move our military HQ to the camp. So we get the capital goes to Boulder City. And we get a whole ton of resources, which is great. And if my math is correct, I have this and these two focuses to do before the inevitable breakdown of the NCR starts. Well, there you go. Camp McCarran is now my capital. And it is now time for me to go back across to the other side of this branch and do more than two at the table. It seems we have underestimated the strength of New Vegas. Should we not be careful, we could find ourselves at war with a third party over the Hoover Dam. 
our troops are better enough to hold off the NCR as it is. Okay, that's not right. We could not hold against a combined Vegas Legion assault. However, we should begin planning for one. And we'll say you will work with Benny to help understand that the Republic has a place for upstanding businessmen, while the Legion will probably crucify him for a hilarious montage at some point. Well, the dude like crucifixions, the Legion. Ooh, now this is a mistake by the NCR. Murphy's Law. Although rangers swooped into the boneyard on the Republic's precious few vertebrates, the people of the city resisted the attempt to seize their governor. Murphy is no longer a threat to the Republic, but now the city is fully under the sway of the followers and the faithful of Dharma, and they vow not to rest until the Republic is free. Perhaps democracy is negotiable after all. Remove the Treaty of New Vegas. And this was a very silly mistake that the New Vegas has made because now I have the opportunity to justify a war goal on New Vegas. 31 can last 155 days. It's almost end of the year. So not only will I be removing a threat to my nation, but also gathering a very yummy trade node, as New Vegas always starts at level 10. Love when things work out my way. Alright, the Horizon Vault 3 has been bypassed. That's because we now we own Vault 3 from the get-go. This used to give you a war goal against Vault 3, but not important anymore. Now what should be my last focus? Hoover, Hoover Forward Operating Base. The Hoover Dam is our primary strategic ob objective in the Mojave and must be defended as such. By converting some of the visitors centered into a military planning base, we can more effectively control any battle that breaks out for Hoover Dam. Ah, who am I kidding? We can more effectively control the battle that will break out for the dam. So we get two outposts, which is what I need to make it to a full six, two anti air. Another two building slots, which will be full, filled by two arms workshops. Okay, I've set up the Hoover Forward Operating Base. Now, if my maths is right, I've got about a week until the California NCR breaks up. So I'm going to see if I can squeeze this focus in, even though it says uh, it will cancel if the crisis in California. We can't rely on anyone to have our backs when it comes to defending the Mojave, especially not gunpowder obsessed tribals or technology obsessed semi religious freaks. The NCO must learn to survive on its own. So, this is what I'm looking for California resistance because it will give me more defense, more factory output, a whole bunch of awesome stuff. So, let's see if I can get it. So, the moment has arrived California in crisis. Sorry, California in chaos. <clears throat> the deadlock in the Republic's election means grim tidings for the Mojave Territories. What shall we do? General Oliver supports Rager General Mossman, while Hannon supports Redding. But at times like these, the followers have gained new support. Now, Julia Farkas seeks to align with the Democratic Anarchists of the Californian Way. What will we do? <clears throat> so, as long as you haven't... Oh, this is still active. Okay. As long as you haven't, for example, sent Hannon off to commit suicide, you, sh the, you have these three options. Now, I'm going to be going for, obviously, a new dawn, for that is to form the state of Mojave. So I will be making the choice, although I won't be sticking with the followers, Farkas will rally the people. So she be becomes a member of the People Party. We leave the NCR. And we, the California state removes Mojave territories as a puppet. Ah, fiendish ways. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. New Vegas. Thank you very, very much for listening. We've got some news for you coming right up. Citizens of Alta Vegas have been flocking to the strip in droves amid a wave of terror caused by a band of raiders known as the Fiends. However, a shocking new development today. A mere f as of mere hours ago, Fiend leaders referring to themselves as motor runner Cook Cook Violet and Driver Nelfi staged a combined attack against Camp McCarran in the wake of the deadlock election resulting in the effective collapse of the NCR. During the result, the Fiends overwhelmed many of the troopers, 
where casualties on both sides have been heavy. When asked to comment, only the fee known as Driver Nalfi gave any insight, providing, providing a rather elaborate and eloquent summary of his previously Mormon beliefs led him to his current radar ways, and how the collapse of the NCR showcases the folly of the organized, of organized government. However, none of this insight was captured, so instead we'll close with how he closed. Quote, the NCR can get fucked, end quote. The current Mojave Territories leader w w was also asked to comment, but when approached, so now this is the only way I know of to play the fiends this way, unless you do it from the start of the game, is we have, well, uh, the, the reply was, quote, the enemy will be dealt with, end quote. And here we are. They were quickly injured by a shot to the torso as the fiends quickly overran Camp McCarran. So if I choose that, I'll become the fiends. Don't want to do that. So here we go. They have declared war. Not a problem. First battalion. We'll go here. And I will put second battalion. Actually... I'll keep them on guard, but I'll have them guard everything there and there. Take all this away. That should be more than enough. And of course there's no time to lose, so 1st Battalion to aggressive, go. And let's get these fiends sorted out. Let's double check my air force is actually doing something. Let's put them all on. There we go, Cass. Oh, it's just red everywhere. This is what I like about the guard order is that they automatically ought counter attack if the area has been taken it's you against the world i don't know if it worked we will check shortly now i need to choose a new dawn and i'll get the event sue for all and all for two after all the bloodshed violence pain and suffering we've endured a new dawn shines on mojave War never changes, but perhaps we can change. Let me just have a quick look at this focus. Ah, let me do it just now. Okay. Oh, okay, I'm snaking. So I see the emblems, but I don't see the unit models. I don't know what's happened to them. Ah, well that was very quick and easy. Select all, submit demands, and Vault 3 is once again back under my control. <coughs> and now while I'm at it, I might as well actually just form them up for our future attack against New Vegas. There we are. And let's send, give the power, let's go into some power armor. Oh, it's nice and quick and easy. All right, a new dawn over the Mojave. So let me just check one thing here. Yes, so I did get the Californian resistance. So that was actually a lucky break. And now, Sue for all and all for Sue. James Sue and Judy Farker stood at the McCarran control tower preparing for the announcement. For weeks they had been scoping out soon to be former General Oliver's futile efforts to stop and apprehend any loyalists to the new followers government of the NCR. He continued to maintain and propaganda speeches that dwindled in both length and attendance, with New California Republic Army's declaration of martial law and attempts to restore the NCR in the Mojave Territories was the one and only option that the people in the army in the Mojave, Mojave had. Sue and Farkas, however, knew they would only be a matter of time before Oliver and his contingent of loyalists went berserk and attempted to stage a violent coup. 
All they could do now was to stand over the ham radio and listen. A voice broke out through the radio silence. Follows Team 1 in position. What are your orders? Sue kept his face calm. Looking over to Farkas, he, who nodded, he bent down to press the transmitter button on the radio. Apprehend the general. Read him his rights. We're prepared to sell for him here at McCarran. Our own, I want only non-violent methods taken. Your weapons remain unloaded, correct? A grunt of acknowledgement. Going in now, sir and ma'am. Do sounds of a door being broken down, of Oliver angrily asking who they were and who sent them, only to suddenly recognize their followers' garb and insignia. So they finally come for me. You won't get the satisfaction, you sons of bitches. Do you know who I am? I know the president. A struggle with shots from Oliver's forty-four heard from the room. A pained grunt was heard, followed by shallow breathing. I won't let you have the satisfaction. The breathing ceased. The radio crackled with another soldier's voice. He tried headshot to me. I tried to wrestle the gun out of his hand, but the four kept pulling the trigger, even as it was pointed towards himself. I'm sorry. Sue pulled his cap over his eyes as Farkas laid a hand on his shoulder. It had to be done. Whew, okay, so retired General Lee, Mojave Territories will be known as the Provisional Republic of Mojave. And there is our new nation symbol. And let's see, <coughs> are we, are we added to anyone? And we still have military access and we still have the countdown to invading New Vegas in just under 50 days. Okay, next focus. Okay, so now left and right aren't an option anymore, but now we can still choose a new leader. You can stick with Farkas if you want and go down this route. It's a bit more peaceful and obviously it's meant to that you join uh, the Dharma's way along with the Californian way, but I am going to go for the Forgotten Hero. So, serving as a public face of the PRM would could be nice, but I have I've never been one to be out front. No, there's one man who deserves the honor, James Sue. The man had things gone differently could have been the one to unite the Mojave peacefully. If not for war hawks like Kimball and Moore, with him in the command chair, the future of the PRM should be far smooth, far more smooth sailing. Yes, so James Sue would become the public face of the PMG. The Provisional Ma Republic of Mojave will be known as the Provisional State of Mojave. So let's get that started. Oh, and the war. Civil War has kicked off between California Way and California State. Reading has also split. But they also have a problem where the sorry, California State is also still involved in the war with Arroyo and Umbra. So that's not good. I would support them if I could, but not with even with sending volunteers. By the time they arrive there, they'll have to be pulled back for my war against New Vegas. So, sorry, no can do. Ah, uh, the leader of my army is now the leader of my country. So that is the forgotten hero done. Now, I do have a focus available city by night, but what this does is raise the rebellion, which I will assist, and the king's will probably end up taking over New Vegas. So I don't want that because I am two weeks away from invading them. So I'm rather going to bank the political power as for Oliver's mistakes and the glass tower. I need 150 political power to actually be able to do either one of those focuses. So for now, we'll just put some political power in the bank and use it later. So my justification is completed against New Vegas. So this will be the first major enemy I'll be facing so far in this campaign. Let's see how it goes. 
Okay. Don't know where my unit models have gone. Maybe I've changed something in my settings somewhere. I'm not sure. It's hard to see what units actually have to, to direct them if I want to do any manual. Oh, doing some very nice work here. More military factories. And New Vegas has fallen. That's them basically out of the war instantly. Okay. I was expecting this to be a lot more difficult than it was. So I will take everything. And straight away I'm going to move my operative to root out resistance in what used to be New Vegas. And hopefully my trade note comes available now because I am certain that even though it says I'm gaining 500 caps each month, I'm pretty sure I'm actually losing with my army being the size that it is. Alright, let's talk about defending your nation. Land first. Now what I'm trying to do, but I haven't completed yet, is I'm trying to build one bunker and three outposts to construct a, ri a ring up across all the areas where I expect attacks to come from and some for just in case. Even though they're not all manned, if I am attacked it'll mean it'll, I'll need less units to defend that area as each bunker and outpost gives you a 8% defense bonus but three outposts are only slightly more expensive than one bunker. So one bunker and three outposts will give you a defense bonus of 32% at the cost of, like I said, a little bit more than two bunkers. <coughs> so now next is the dreaded naval invasion. Now I've already covered how even a small navy can help prevent one from happening, but what if one still does? What I've done here is I've set up 2nd Battalion to guard the, ba the banks of the Colorado, making sure that there is, a, there is at least one unit per tile. Now I use guard mode for two reasons. Number one is that the units will be able to move to help defend tiles as attacks happen, but still move back to the original position afterwards. And two, if a defending unit is pushed back, they will automatically counterattack, whereas a fallback line, if it gets broken, stays broken, and I'll have to do a counterattack manually. So now if they attack over a land crossing, I'll have defenses built up to help fend them off, and if they attack by water, then I know that there's someone waiting for them to land. I came up with the strategy because I play in max speed, and I don't always have time to adapt and manly counter an attack. But hey, if you know of a better system, I'll gladly test it out. I'll even showcase it in the video and credit you with the plan if it's successful. Okay, something I've decided to do is I'm going to send volunteers to help the California state. Why am I choosing them? Well, mainly for role playing because uh, Sue and Moore used to be colleagues in the army, so I'd figure he'd want to help her out. Now, I can currently send two units across. So let me select from here, I'll select my first recon and power armor as I if I remember checking those two the best breakthrough separate armor group I'll put the uh, Gorbits in charge of it and now let me see if I can also send some air volunteers I can send zero air wings unfortunately so no air volunteers Oh well, I'm sure those two will be able to help out. Alright, so with my volunteers on their way to help the Californian state, I think I'm going to wrap this episode 
up here. I'd like to thank everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.